I would like to welcome you here at our booth uh, of Huawei. Today, of course, everybody's talking about uh, wireless, about new innovations, about mobiles. So today we have a really great opportunity to talk to Ken. Thanks, Ken, for speaking to us today. So Ken, I'm uh, really curious about your insights uh, if we are talking about the antenna challenges and opportunities for the LTE area. What I'm struck by is how important antenna technology is becoming for the mobile operators as we shift more and more into an LTE generation. <laughs> In the world of voice coverage, antennas could be a fairly simple apparatus that would be deployed for voice coverage. With LTE, we have mobile broadband data being supported, data growth ramping dramatically, and driving a need for enhancements for more capacity, good quality, spectrum efficiency, and this is translating into an impact on antenna technology. The operators now are faced with putting up more sites to deal with densification, the growth of the traffic, the growth of the users. The operators as well to drive the quality as well as the bandwidth, looking to MIMO technologies, which put even greater challenges on the antenna environment. So, as a result, you have tremendous pressure on your real estate. You have tremendous pressure on the architectures of the systems that are going out, if you're talking about distributed antenna systems, for example. It is a key issue that operators have to factor in to their deployment plans, their budgets, and actually monitor and track as a, a, as a network ages. This is not going to be static. They have to continually reevaluate, change, refresh. So antenna technology, it was a sleepy domain perhaps several years ago, no longer. It is now a very vibrant part of our market sector. So Ken, as you know, Huawei announced that 2013 was really a great year for us. It was a milestone year for us. So uh, overall, we have sold around about 1.65 billion of antennas to more than 360 operators worldwide in more than 155 countries. So how do you see this uh, development, this evolution of Huawei antennas, and how do you see the future of Huawei antennas in the next coming years? When you look at Huawei, it's one of the leading suppliers of mobile broadband radio systems in the world. And that puts the company in, in a very unique position. The insight, the cross-fertilization, as it were, between the radio access networks, the base stations, and the antennas can be a bit more comprehensive when it's under one roof. We have other solutions you know, that we find in the industry that are partner solutions, which are, are, are certainly, they're, they're very good companies that bring these solutions. But it's, at the end of the day, it's difficult to get the ultimate synergy bet between the components. And perhaps more importantly, speed and agility. Because your development processes can be put into tight synchronization and deliver what your customers are asking for when you need it. So an interesting combination. It's been 10 years, but really, only recently has it, has it really exploded out there. I think it'll be an interesting 10 years, you know, another 10 years will be perhaps just as fascinating. Well, as you know, uh, all the networks are actually built with passive antennas. So uh, step by step, we are coming into an active antenna solution. So how do you see, as an analyst, how do you see this evolution? And when do you think the big rollout will be done with active antennas? You know, for sure, we already have active antennas in some networks. You know, in some cases, trial situations in the United States, T-Mobile is, is doing a very significant active antenna rollout. You know, I think we'll see some significant rollouts of active antennas in China with the TDLTE rollout. There's some strong advantages with the beam forming you know, potential of TDD LTE, uh, the eight pipe type systems that, that are out there can potentially benefit from it. In Europe, you know, I guess I see some cautious uh, progress. Interest though, when I talk to the operators, they're very, they're very interested in the benefits. 
that can come from the active antennas, you know, removing, eliminating some of the loss that occurs, you know, avoiding some of the passive intermodulation errors that can occur when there's a makeup, makeup of connections on site. So in order to deliver quality services, moving towards active antennas makes sense to a lot of operators. What's great is, I, I think that the issues about mean time between failure, the ability to withstand the, the punishing environments that are out there, that those concerns are starting to melt away uh, on the back of experience of operators that are having success with the deployment, and just time as, as the operators get their own experience through the trials. In terms of the time frame for the ramp, my suspicion it's probably two to three years before we start seeing the, the knee of the curve accelerate in a meaningful way. So Ken, it was very enlightening to speak with you today. So thank you very much again that you have visited us and hope to see you soon. It's been my pleasure, Heino. Thank you.